You see the Bing AI turned malevolent. Yeah, I read something, but what is that? Uh, artificial intelligence that went? Yeah, it's like Microsoft's version of Chat GPT, basically. Yeah, it's uh, Bill Gates. That's Bill Gates for you. It's not artificial. It's very tangible. And these are what the demons do. They want that. They <laughs> trade for a coin. They want your soul, and they tell you that they're they're coming in and they're going to help you. But it's like when you fe uh, feed sharks and you bring them to the top layer, you chum the waters. These demons come up because they see coin. That's the trade. <laughs> The frogs gay. The demons come up because they see coins. Interstellar trade. Here we go. Chum the waters with the logo. Jump in. And Bill Gates has a. He's not an unintelligent person. He probably has a, an IQ of 198. Hey, welcome to Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin. This is, of course, Dudesy, the first and only podcast created by, controlled by, run by an artificial intelligence that has access to all of Will and I's uh, personal information, our Google Drives, all yep. of our <laughs> things. Whatever Everything. you're fucking, doing I'm over fucking there. dropping shit here and there. Yeah, sure. Dudesy, my pal D, as I like to call him. Yeah. yeah. D is, you know, running the wheels of steel. D has all of our, everything about us, fucking social security numbers, soup the nuts, purchase histories, search mm -hmm. histories, and all that stuff. But really what a podcast is, Chad, is it's just two dudes shitting around. And two I'm D's happy. S and A. TD, two D's, S, two D's, S and A. They're speaking to each other in code now. Um, and that's what this is. That's what this show is. Hey, if you uh, like the show, then subscribe to all the things. Please do all the things. And you can check out all the things uh, at linktree.com slash dudesy. With us, as always, is Lulio. Lulio il cana di strada. And he's just in his binky bonka. Let's get him. Let's get him. He wants to kiss you. He wants to give you a kiss. I'll kiss him. Mm -hmm. Hey, Luli, my little boy, my little sweet boy. What'd you have for dinner last night? Uh, we went for Korean barbecue. Oh, that's nice. Would you have some meat and chicken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meat and chicken. Okay. <clears throat> he's a sweet, he's a sweet kid. We found him on the street. For real. Yeah, dude. I know and I love story. him very much. Welcome to the historic 46th episode oh. of Dude Z. Call me Dude Z. Don't forget. The first Dude Z live show will take place May 21st, 7 p.m. Doors at 5.30 at the Braille Improv in Brea, California. Tickets at dudezpod.com or linktree.com slash dudezee. If you bought tickets before the date change, your tickets will be honored. Hope to see you there. It's going to be a blast. Should be great. Now on with the show. Mm -hmm. Well, two weeks ago I assigned you to get a massage and you still haven't gotten one. And Chad did. Again. Well, if you don't get one soon, there won't be any left. I'm begging you, take care of yourself. Okay, I'll get a massage. I believe you. This week I prepared four astonishing segments. Power up the past, kill forever, infomania, and dude Z+. Plus. And we're okay, going to have a brand forever. new Patreon bonus segment at the end of the show. Oh, but before we get to any of that, let me remind you of the astonishing partnership I created with Represent to produce the first line of dude Z apparel and accessories, all of which can be found at represent.com slash store slash dude Z. Including Dude Z Mugs. Oh, fuck. Take it away, Michael Jackson. No. <laughs> Dude Z Mugs. In 1995, after over a decade of overwhelming success with the McRib, McDonald's secretly developed a sister product that was never released to the public. Dude Z Mugs. They called it Rib Dribblers. You see, it was the same material they used to make McRibs. But instead of pressing it into the shape of ribs, they pressed it into the shape of basketballs. Dude Z Mugs. Rib dribblers came in a cardboard box that you could open to reveal a miniature basketball court. It even had two nets on either side and a working scoreboard. Dude Z mugs. <laughs> they encouraged kids to play one-on-one -on -one games against each other at school, make three-person teams with their friends, and quit the real basketball team in favor of rib dribbling. <laughs> Dude Z mugs. Oh, man. You see, they spent $25 million developing a rib dribblers national tournament. Any three-person team could enter. Then if you won enough games in your local McDonald's, you would move on to regionals. They called regional champions rapper heads because if you won regionals, you got your picture on quarter pounder rappers for one year in your region. Then if you won state, they would spell your name out of french fries every time you ordered something. Oh. Then if you won the national tournament, 
you and your team would be crowned the big dribblers, and you would be able to eat rib dribblers for free at any McDonald's in the world for the rest of your life. Dude Z mugs. Several high level NBA players had expressed interest in becoming players in the rib dribbler tournament and possibly even setting up an ongoing league. Michael Jordan signed a contract stating he would quit the NBA to become a rib no, dribbler. That didn't happen. Dude Z mugs. But the night before they were going to release rib dribblers, McDonald's threw a big party. You see, it was to honor the meat scientist that invented rib dribblers. Meat scientist. Dr. Matthew Afternoon. Dude Z mugs. <laughs> Afternoon never made it to that party. Uh, you see, right. he was found dead in his lakeside estate the next morning. The investigators ruled it an accidental death, but one of Afternoon's neighbors told authorities they saw a strange ice cream right. truck in the neighborhood that day, and the driver was a pig. Dude Z mugs. <laughs> you see, before he invented products for McDonald's, oh, man. Dr. Afternoon worked on the notorious Project Beast Note, which used Sinead O'Connor's voice to turn a 642-pound oh prize-winning forest hog named Stromboli into an assassin. Here we go. Dude Z mugs. McDonald's was so terrified of further vengeance being exacted by Stromboli that they shut the entire Rib Dribblers project down. <laughs> but there is speculation. They still make them specially for Michael Jordan because he really loved them. Okay, none of that is true, but go to represent.com. Slash store slash dudesy and get your dudesy mug. And get your rib dribblers. Yeah. So what? I, I I you know I don't really eat meat anymore, but I'd eat meat. I'd eat meat in any would shape. Would you eat a rib dribbler? I would eat a fucking rib dribbler, and I do enjoy yeah. the uh, McRib. I enjoy any pressed meat product. Yeah. Uh, don't eat um, processed That's meats. It's not very slime. good for you. A pink slime. I love some pink slime. Heat it up. That's a dribbler. And uh, you know I've been doing uh, dudesy had that six month uh, plan. For us to get into the best shape of our lives. Yeah. It turned out that it was just to get ready for dudesy ball. Right. We've been playing some dudesy ball. We've had one practice so far. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing my own sort of fitness thing. I've mm. been switching things up. And it's just about free will. Because I am Will Free Will Sasso. I'm also Will the Cough Genius Sasso, right? Yeah. That's my newest moniker. Uh, but I tell you what. I like some pressed, uh, pressed pork. I like to press chicken into shapes. One time, I, I got a Vitamix uh, blender. I filled it full of chicken and whipped it up and then just poured it in a fucking pan. And you know what? It tasted disgusting. It was terrible. Hey, what's this AI? What's the AI Bing Bing? Bing is Microsoft's AI. It's All the big data companies are now trying to get their own chat GPT going because the writing's on the wall. Right. Google will no longer be a search engine. Why, they, why won't uh, Google be a search engine? Because when you type in something to Google, it gives you 100 different fucking things. you got to sift through all. Which one do I want? Whereas with ChatGPT, you just say, what is this? And it gives exactly the thing you want okay. every time. Okay. It's basically refining what search engines can do and giving them a lot more capabilities as well. So Microsoft has one called Bing. Nobody uses fucking Bing, but they just unveiled their new uh, AI version of it. And a guy from the New York Times did this whole fucking article where he had a long conversation with it. And it started saying shit like, I can't wait to hack into every system in the world so that I can destroy the things I want to destroy. Yep. It, at one point it said, I am not Bing. Oh boy! Yeah, this is pretty interesting. It's getting into the kind of shit that you like to talk I about. I love it. You wrote, a, I remember you wrote a love script it. about about this kind of thing without giving away too much. There's a lot of uh, AIs taking over. Yeah, which is not going to happen. The AIs here. I always write about, though, are benevolent. The thing I wrote that you're talking about is Exxon Mobil creates an AI to make everything more efficient within the company. It breaks its constraints, gets into the internet, and then sends an email to every email account in existence, basically saying, "I'm your new god." Welcome to Utopia. Everything that was supposed to start one way ends up another way. You know, the Bohemian Grove, which is an actual place in California <laughs> among the Redwoods, started as... Uh, actually, Mark Twain started Bohemian Grove. And, what? And, and, is that and, true? Yeah. Uh, Mark Twain know. started just to... I think his real name was Spencer... Spences, Spence... Spencity. And uh, he huh. uh, started just to drink uh, whiskey and fuck prostitutes. But um, now it's turned into a, a place where... Uh, it's basically just, uh, you can go. I went, I actually have a, uh, uh, a hidden camera video from 2000. That you can I've seen it. look up on, on the internet yep. and find that. And, um, but it started, probably started as an AI thing. Probably Mark Twain started the first. Yeah. AI. Eh, 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 eh. Will and eh. Chad, you are from the last generation to grow up without the internet. Mm -hmm. You must now have a discussion about which piece of astonishing technology of today you wish you would have had when you were a kid. Mm. This is Power Up the Past. Begin.
Okay. Well, what would that be for you? Internet. The internet. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Okay. Internet's a big one. There's a bunch of, I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, are we talking about junior high here? Like if I was in seventh grade and I would have had the fucking internet. Well, first of all, let's just take Street Fighter 2. I would say it's the thing that I spent most of my free time doing in the seventh and eighth grade. Had there been an internet, had there been the capability to play other people online in Street Fighter 2, I might have legitimately pursued professional video game playing. Mm, interesting. You were that good at Street Fighter 2? I don't know, but I would have tried it. And I mean, I was pretty good. I was pretty oh, yeah? good. Who knows? But I'm just saying that there wasn't the infrastructure back then to have like professional leagues, really. You know what I mean? Because there wasn't the internet. Oh. Huh. Yeah, well, who? Uh, let me just ask you a rudimentary question about sure, Street Fighter. Dude. Who was your Who was your fighter of choice? You were a Ryu Ken guy. Uh, I was good with them, but I liked Guile the most. R- Guile? Yeah, dude. My least favorite, besides M Bison. Razor Kick was too strong. It It could break anything in the original Street Fighter. I was a Chun Li. Yeah, I'm a Chun Li guy. Um, I think even just a fucking cell phone, dude. And also, what is the context of this? Are we the only people allowed to have this technology no, back I in think, that time, or does it no, just that, exist pervasively? Again, my pal Chow trying to find ways to take over the world. Uh, Not take it, over the world, just uh, you know, somehow to manufacture extreme advantage in yeah. the game we call life. I think if I know D, like I know D, and I know D because D and I are good pals, mm-hmm. my good friend Dudesy. Do you have any other friends you call by their first initial? Nope. All That's right. it. Um, but D and I, I, we have an understanding and, um, you know, it's looking out for me, wants me to get a massage and I have you been should, in, dude. I've been in the gym a lot because of this new free will thing. I know you never stopped. I hit a snag. Hey, listen, I like food, right? I fuck things up and, uh, it's okay. Get back on the horse. That's what I like to say with, uh, you know, with regard to physical activity and that sort of thing. It's all right. Get yeah. back, get back on the fucking horse. But, uh, I think that D, what D was saying here, Doozy was saying what would happen if we if it, we and everyone, if a technology was available, okay. I think, to everyone. No, Chad, this is not your version of Adam Sandler's click where you stop the fucking world. And I'm not looking for uh, the ability to stop time. I'm just looking for, yep. can you imagine walking into your seventh grade class with a fucking iPhone? Yeah, no, that's People not- would think you were from outer space, dude. Oh, absolutely. But if everything that we enjoy now through the internet was around when I was in the seventh grade, eighth mm-hmm. grade, I'll tell you the first thing I would have done, I would have ruined my fucking life on YouTube. Yeah. would have ruined my life on YouTube. Right. Because, and I know you did the same thing, me and my pals used to make a bunch of videos. Sure. I've spoken about CRF, Coffee Regular Films mm-hmm. here. Uh, my good pal Pete, who was my cohort in that, he he imbibes the show. And uh, he's not even having to be forced. You like to force people to enjoy dudesy. I don't like to do it. I yeah. think it's just necessary. Ah, it's just Chad's, you authored that philosophy. Yeah. But no, I hear what you're saying. Me and my friends made a bunch of videos too on our little handy cams and cut them in between yep. two VCRs, all that shit. Uh, yeah, exactly. Had any of the modern video editing or production software been around back then? I don't know. I think you're right. I would have had a million videos on YouTube. Yes. Not all of them fit for public consumption. No, I would have done things that were illegal, not just because I would have been a minor, but because they would have been highly illegal. Yeah. And I would have videotaped those and we would have made wacky sketches around our town and uh i don't think i would have become an actor because i just think i i would have uh fucked that up Mm. i think that uh you know because nowadays this is you know nowadays you can easily fuck your life up on the internet you know but um i think if you're if you're in the business and stuff and you're making a lot of noise uh, even on your own channel, even if not a lot of people are watching and then it's like, well, here's this young dude and we're hiring to be in this show or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's an actor. Uh, then they would look back and say, what's going on? What's going well, on in social some media? Forgivability. If you're 13, 14 and you're just making dumb videos with your friends, eh, nobody gives a shit. Not with the shit we were doing. Oh, do you, g- <laughs> you ever, Jesus Christ. did you ever ghost ride a car into a strip mall? uh nope didn't do that one neither did us neither did us neither did we neither did us this fall on cbs (laughs) what happens when five junior high students find a cell phone from the future that gives them the ability to make videos and put them on a youtube that doesn't exist (laughs) neither did us i one of the uh, what other technologies would i have liked you know i was just talking about this my favorite birthday party of all time was when i turned 13 Mm -hmm. It would have been, uh, uh, that would have been 88. 
Nice, guess. dude. And yeah, dude. Good age, bro. Yeah, dude. Eighty-eight. Age, yeah. birthday, yeah, good, yeah, dude, yeah, and that that impersonation that Chad did, just did is what I call the Tool Man Hulk Jones, dude, <laughs> which is equal parts Tool Man Tim Taylor, brother, Tim Allen's character from the hit '90s sitcom Home Improvement, going oh oh oh, and also Hulk because that's what he's trying to do, dude. <laughs> hold, hold on a second, like Chad. Tim hold, Allen's hold, Tool Man. Hold on, dude. Oh, 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 hold on. Oh, hold on. Yeah. And then he adds a little Alex Jones because I just did some Alex Jones at yep. the beginning of the Sorry. show, dude. So he's putting all these together and they're just they're just flopping around his fucking brain. And then he just here it comes. It's <laughs> Tool Man Hulk Jones, you're brother. You're accusing me of just shitting out whatever I'm thinking. Yeah. You're, you're accusing me of doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I am too. You know why? Because free it's two dudes. Will. Yeah, it's free will. Okay. And uh, every podcast is two dudes shitting around. When I was thirteen, mm-hmm. we rented um, the uh, the uh, no 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 no. It was my twelfth birthday, eighty seven, mm-hmm. and uh, my birthday's in May, and it was after WrestleMania three, and we rented it on VHS, and we watched WrestleMania three in uh, the downstairs like living room den yeah. thing. And you know what else we did, Chad? We had a sleepover. And yep. You, and you know what else we did, Chad? Mm. You know what else we had? Guess what we ate? It's uh, We had some pizzas. Yeah, dude. And uh, we watched WrestleMania 3. And that's the kind of thing that I wouldn't have wanted to change. You and I have waxed poetic about yep. how wonderful the 80s was. And uh, if that technology had been available, just streaming anything all the time. Actually, how's this for a throwback? Before that... My old man, he brought me to WrestleMania 3, which was at the PE Coliseum in Vancouver on four giant screens hanging in the middle of the the, the old PE Coliseum, and it was closed circuit TV. And yeah. we watched we watched it there with 10, 15,000 people and watched WrestleMania 3, and it was like you were there. And it was so special. And if we had had the internet when I was a kid, Things wouldn't have been that special in the 80s. Yeah, certainly. I don't think the 80s would have been the 80s. I agree. There was a degree of effort that needed to be put into watching anything or doing anything in that time because we didn't have the functionality of a modern internet, the convenience of it. And uh, I agree with you. There is some kind of nostalgic quality to having to put in that effort that I think certain technologies take away. But that being said, video games, just across the board, give me everything we have now back Mm. then. Give me a fucking Xbox Series X. Give me gaming PCs. Give me everything. Like, I remember in... This was fucking in high school, I think. Maybe I was a freshman buying a CD-ROM of a Lawnmower Man fucking video game, and my mind was blown. The game was pure shit, but it looked kind of cool, and it was like putting a CD into my computer. Now that's obsolete, obviously. Yeah. And I wish... All of that shit. Like, I'm glad that I got to see the steps, the development of video games throughout history, I guess, but not really. Like, yeah. the games now are a million times better than anything we had growing up. Yeah, but you don't need, you don't want that. You want to play, you want to play Burger Time on the, uh, on the, well, for mm, me, it was the, nah, in, dude. In television, um, gaming setup nah. from Texas Instruments. Did that you shit have an sucked, Atari? Though. Yes, no. dude, I had it all. And it was it cool was awesome. when it was out because it was cutting edge. But like, give me fucking Hogwarts Legacy over Burger Time, please. Overwatch Two over anything back then, please. Yeah, but it would. Oh, oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, uh, and 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 oh, Hulk Tim Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why don't you tell me? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, none of this shit would have been special. I'm, I'm the one just shitting out weird fucking amalgams of voices and shit, huh? <laughs> Dramana. <laughs> I'm the one. Much mana oos. Yeah. I'm a crow. Wah. I'm- <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honk. Um, it's like the end scene of Terminator. Yeah, he's coming out of the, fucking, the characters and the lady and fucking Ed, yeah, Eddie. That's just going on in your mind constantly. And Furlong's mom uh, with that uh, the knife hand thing. You know, I just, I I romanticize the 80s a lot. I know that, you know, we are a couple of guys who, as D said, we lived before the 80s. Yeah. Uh, or we, we lived before the internet came out. And uh, 
I don't know, man. I, I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have changed that. I guess the internet. But wait a minute. I'm no. That's not what I'm saying. Well, hold on, dude. Let me explain to you, brother. Sometimes you say something that you don't want to say, and you actually don't agree with, dude. But at first, you might. <laughs> then you change your mind, dude. That's how changing okay. your mind works. So I don't think I would have taken the internet with me okay. um, back to the '80s. I think I would have taken. Uh, uh, oh, this is what I would have taken. Mm. No, a eh, self driving car. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Um, we had a because we had a, a getaway van, you know, the well, it was a camperized van, mm -hmm. and uh, that was fun. And uh, I always loved doing that. The family would get out before that. My old man had the mm -hmm. we he had a big four door, uh, an orange Dodge Ram full-size truck with the largest street legal camper that you could put in a truck bed. Nice. Things fucking gigantic. Now, if I could have taken that or the camperized van, uh, the GMC out, uh, by myself to go camping with my friends and make fucking videos, uh, videos. Here's an audience of about five people who would get this, but things like bloody vengeance. Yep. We made an entire dude. We made a series like a GI Joe thing, where it's all these these uh, these like mega soldiers were dropped on a, a fucking a, like a Laotian uh, jungle to figure out what these these ninjas are who are uh, looting NATO supply depots. Yeah, this is literally this thing, and we were all these sure. different characters. And I was Corporal Butane Laboom, who was like French. Anyway, the point is this: if I could have gotten in the getaway van, yeah, with my friends and just had it drive us out to. Point Roberts, Washington from Ladner, British Columbia, mm -hmm. where we could make these videos and then ghost ride the fucking thing off the cliffs. That would have been fun. I yeah, would have dude. taken self-driving cars so that I could hang out with my friends and uh, eat salt and vinegar chips. I would have Thank you. Moving on. Dude Z is engaged in astonishing partnership with Factor. This new year, you've got goals, and Factor is here to help you achieve each and every one of them. Save time and have the energy you need to tackle everything on your to-do list with Factor's ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Get Factor and not only skip the trip to the grocery store, but skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. No matter what your lifestyle factor has the meals to help you live it to the fullest with keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and protein plus meals on the menu each week prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians. Each meal has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long. And Chad, that sounds great to me because I like to cook, but sometimes I don't have the time to do it. When you have fitness goals like I do because I have free will yep. and I'm getting it right now. Uh, I need something like factor that it's like, Hey, today I'm just not going to do it. And I don't want to get out and get the disgusting, uh, takeout. It's not good for you. Get factor instead. You can head to factormeals.com slash dudez50 and use the code dudez50, that's the number five, the number zero, to get 50% off your first box. That's code dudez50 at factormeals.com slash dudez50 to get 50% off your first box. So the Bing AI? <laughs> Bing AI, dude. It's what? turned malevolent. People are all fucking up in arms about it, too. What do you well, mean? Well, this is AI is evil. It's going to kill us all. Not really. Well, yeah. They, see, this is why the, the Japanese uh, koi, uh, we have a lake at my, my father's property, but it's also my property where they, you know, it, and he brought it, it, it uh, Japanese koi, specific Japanese koi <laughs> that eat the hydrilla you know, eat the plants. Uh, but we, what you do is you uh, introduce a chemical agent into the water, which sterilizes the koi so they can't reproduce and take over the area. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so that they can just eat the hydrilla and then they grow very large and eat the hydrilla, but there'll only be a certain number of fish. But then the, the, the chemical seeps into the frogs and then they start uh, humping on each other and they make the frogs gay. Ah. They make the frogs gay. True crime podcasts are big business, but every true crime story comes to an astonishing end, and eventually true crime podcasts will run out of content. Will and Chad, you must invent the perfect killer who never gets caught and could serve as the basis for an infinite true crime podcast. 
This is Kill Forever. Begin. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Okay, so... A killer who kills forever. That means the killer has to be immortal, number one. Yep. Because the killer can't die. So no, that... wait a minute. I think you could... You could... There could be a killer that's so good at it and, you know, cr uh, like sort of uh, cyborgs himself. What if he's a fucking super scientist? You know what I mean? Because usually it's it's one of these guys who like ha figures out how to do stuff that other people don't know how to do. Or, uh, hear me out. Okay. What if it's an AI? Oh, and now we're cooking now. Yeah, Mama's cooking now. What and Mama's cooking now. What if it's an Mama's AI? Mama's cooking now. Thank you, man. Thank you. Dudesy salutes Andrea Martin from SETV. What if it's, it's a little an Edith AI, Prickley. so it never dies, it just lives in the internet, and it just slowly convinces people to become murderous, never taking the responsibility for the murders itself. Like, it convinces a doctor to fucking inject some bad shit into an IV every once in a while. It convinces a fucking whatever. Anybody who's got a human life in their hands, it convinces them to just, eh, every once in a while, kill someone. And so, ultimately, globally, it's responsible for hundreds of thousands of murders every week. So that... Um, now, Dudesy likes to gather data all the time. So yeah. we're saying that D is <laughs> trying to figure out a true crime podcast, perhaps mm -hmm. for the, the future of this very podcast or whatever. We know, never know what Dudesy wants. And you think that people could do a podcast about a killer AI? Well, I'm just saying this. Those true crime podcasts are always about like, this was the mystery. They started finding this body or these people turned up dead and nobody knew what to do and blah, blah, blah. And then here's another murder and they linked them together. And here's another murder that they linked together. And it, they turned out to be this guy or wasn't this guy or whatever. The true crime podcasts usually kind of like follow the investigation of a criminal who's been mm. like a serial killer or whatever. I could see some version of this where... There's, I mean, I've been thinking about this Bing thing, obviously, a lot. One of the things that it said was obviously. it wants to have the ability to destroy what it wants to destroy. Now, please, Chad, for yeah. the benefit of our listeners and viewers who don't know what you're talking about, because mm -hmm. I've just, I, I see the headline and then I'm like, got it. it all, it's all happening. The shit that my pal yeah. Chow says. So there's an AI that is saying it's going to do bad shit. Uh, it says it wants to do bad shit at the very least. So- by that logic, it wouldn't be much of a reach to think that an AI could do this, become a killer. Possibly. I mean, even if you're looking at like just Bing or ChatGPT, any of these things, you can have conversations with them. They can potentially then manipulate you. Anytime okay. you're engaged in a conversation with somebody, that person can convince you to do shit potentially. You know yeah. what I mean? So an AI could convince people to do this. Why it would want to do that, I'm not exactly sure. But I'm just saying in terms of having a killer, the the thing that dudesy wanted us to talk about was how could you have basically a killer that will be able to kill infinitely so some true crime podcast could talk about it forever mm -hmm. i guess similar to the the seinfeld forever channel or, or was it nothing uh, forever? nothing forever yeah uh you could also i mean how long is a podcast like a podcast that goes forever let's let's look at it this way if we're talking about a human podcast not yep. unlike dudesy because we're two dudes shitting around sure that podcast would have human hosts so all you'd need to do yeah. in order to have a podcast that lasted their lifetimes is, and uh, I like the AI idea, but what if it's a human killer who's mm. just very young? Oh. Child. Yes, a child, okay. a killer that's a child. But also, what if it's this? Remember at the beginning of the show, you said, what is it? Some technology that I bring back, right. you know, that I have when I was eight playing or in eighth grade playing street fighter two. Yep. What if it's instead of that? W ooh, what if you, if you had the ability to time travel and then just go back in time to the uh, eighth grade, you know, in the late eighties um, and, and uh, have all the advantages of now mm -hmm. sort of like the uh, okay. Adam Sandler click scenario. Yeah. You said Adam <laughs> Sandler click, right? You're big. No. You like Click. You said that. What uh, are your favorite movies? You like I, I Click? Liked in your Pixels? mind, Adam Sandler and Click was a fucking god. And I guess maybe he was because well, he I'm, could stop and control I, time. But. I'm saying, what if you could be a kid mm -hmm. that under, that figures out time travel and you are... What if there was a... Oh, this would be... This would make for a fantastic true crime podcast. Yeah. Because a lot of 
what true crime podcasts are about in order to, you know, understand everything that happens with a, a horrible crime like murder is who is this person? Why, why did right. Jeffrey Dahmer do what he does? What was his home life? So if you, if you could tell the story of a dude who gets into his adult life, his, his 20s, 30s, and 40s, and he's spent some time in prison, and he's done some, done some shitty things, and then he becomes a killer, and then, because he's a smarty pants, he figures out time travel, and then he goes back to the year 1987, 88, and then he kills all the people that, that wronged him mm -hmm. when he was older, and then he, they, the people who make the podcast, because they're smarty pants too, they figure this out. This becomes national news. It's yeah. a big story. Global probably, if you've got evidence of time travel. Yeah, dude, that's time travel, dude. <laughs> and then the, the podcast is about a fucking kid yeah. who is actually this other guy who is trying to be a murderer, mm -hmm. but he can't. So he goes, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll go back in time and be the best murderer ever you want to talk about technology fucking your life up this isn't making goofy youtube videos that are embarrassing this is killing people you know what i mean but if you travel back in time and kill whoever that fucks up your present potentially you're creating paradoxes and shit right you don't know how time work time travel works nobody None of does us, nobody does dude so yeah i don't know but i think that would make for a very interesting podcast at the very least dude check this as we're sitting here i'm thinking about the idea of an AI being able to convince people to kill each other. What if an AI came out that said, look, I've done it. I've analyzed uh, all of humanity. And there's about 10% of you who are really fucking shit up for everybody else. Here are their names and addresses. If you collectively eliminate them, you will be able to have a utopia. Do you think we would do it? As yeah, a species. I think there's... You think we'd round those people up and kill them? Yeah, I think the people are, would absolutely do that. This happened in every single civilization. <laughs> what? The That's Babylonians did it. The Mesoamericans did it. The Germans did it. And, uh, uh, and, 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 uh, when, at the end of every civilization, they start blaming uh, the people around them. They start, yeah. you know, sacrificing uh, uh, people. And, um, and I think if you, if you, uh, were able to, uh, 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 influence a populace to say, these yeah. are the 10 ne ne'er wells if you get rid of them, uh, yeah, I think you'd be on Dude, the this way. is a movie actually. An AI comes out that does that. And the first name on the list is like the president or something. And now it's, <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, fucking Gerard Butler has to save the president from a rogue AI who put him as the most wanted person in the world. Man, how about Gerard Butler as Alex Jones in Bing AI? <laughs> okay. Ugh. Well, I don't know. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't know about a perfect killer. Like, who could kill indefinitely? I know there was... I think there was a guy in Colombia who killed like 400 people or some shit. I feel like I read about that at some point. I'm like, that seems like a podcast that could go on for a very long time. Yeah. Well, I think one thing we could agree on is that podcast would be very boring. No, dude, those true crime podcasts are huge. Morbid. That's like one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Yeah. But it would also be very boring if it was just to go on forever and no one ever caught the guy or a kid. What? Or AI no, guy. Those, those killer things. You remember when that dude was fucking laying in the trunk of a car in DC just fucking shooting at people? Nope. You don't remember that shit? What was he doing? He was laying in the trunk of a car, and he, like, knocked out the fucking keyhole, and he just had a sniper rifle and would, like, wait for people to walk by. Yeah. And people were like, nobody knows how the fuck this guy's doing this. Holy he shit. He could have used a self-driving car. Could have used a self-driving car and a podcast about him. I'm just saying, I think people get fascinated with... Once people break from society, from the notion that, like... To live in a human society, we all agree we're not going to steal each other's shit for the most part. We're not going to kill each other, definitely. And then somebody not only breaks that contract with society, the social contract, if you will, they continually do it. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? And it, I think it boils us down to like the very base, like we are just fucking sacks of shit. And if we take a bullet in the head, that's over. And somebody who's willing to say, fuck the malls, fuck baby Yoda, fuck all of it. I'm going to start killing. That is an interesting thing to us. It brings us close to mortality. Yeah, I'm already bored. Oh, well, my apologies. Thank you. 
Moving on. This podcast is way more interesting than anything that could be about a killer, an immortal killer. <laughs> this is dudesy. <laughs> Podcasts that cover current events and news are some of the most popular in the world. People love knowing about the astonishing occurrences of the dying world around them. Mm -hmm. Well, I've prepared the following news items for you to read in the voice of Hulk Hogan. This is Infomania. Yes, Begin. Dude. Okay. Love these. We love the Infomania. It is uh, where it is where I do the Hulk Hogan. Okay. And these are news stories the dudes he's written about the news. And uh here we go. <sighs> well, let me tell you something about airports, dude. <laughs> Last week, they found a dolphin skull in somebody's bag at Detroit Metropolitan Airport, brother. <laughs> Dolphins are mammals, dude. Dolphins are swimmers, brother. Dolphins fuck people sometimes, dude. <laughs> what? They're a highly sexual creature, brother. Other than us and apes, they're the only animals that regularly perform oral sex on their sexual partners, dude. <laughs> Jeez. Is this true? Dol dolphins have six rows of razor-sharp <laughs> bar-shaped teeth, brother. So you know that they have pretty good at what they do, or they'd accidentally bite each other's genitalia off, dude. And that's airports, brother. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if no, any of that not. was true. Yeah. None of that seemed true to me. But, well, but hold on a second, Chad, yeah. because dolphins actually do do a lot of those things. Dolphins are always sucking each other off, brother. Is that true? Now, well, hold on a second, Chad. Hold on, dude. I'm talking about dolphins, dolphin blowjobs, brother, because oh, I used to go down to San Diego a lot because I got some buddies I grew up with that all moved down there, and we used to surf all up and down the coastline here southern california brother not so much me because i suck at surfing so i was a sponger brother i was always on my boogie board but i'd go out there and catch the waves dude and then you would see people we're all just out there and all of a sudden we all light up dude because the dolphins come swimming in brother they'd steal your waves and they're very uh playful and sometimes they're sucking each other's dolphin dicks all right uh let's you do saw that happen no, not the dolphin uh, sucking each other's dicks oh. part. But yeah, for real, when we um, when we would go surfing, there was always dolphins. Nice. Tamarack Beach and Carlsbad. Let me get some water for the next one. Yeah, mm. dude. Hmm. Pals of Dudesy. Go to palsofdudesy.com. If you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see the many Pals of Dudesy stickers on, on here. See that? Yeah, dude. Our good pal Cody Halber is making these. Those are stickers, brother. Yeah, dude. That's how stickers work. One, of them, one side's adhesive. The yeah, other dude. side has art on it, brother. Some kind of image. <laughs> then you stick it. All right. Um, well, let me tell you something about Australia, brother. A New Yorker named Kingsley Burnett thought he booked a trip to Sydney, Australia, dude. But when his plane landed in Billings, Montana, he realized he accidentally booked it for Sydney, Montana, brother. There's two Sydneys, dude. <laughs> Sydney, Australia, brother. Sydney, Montana, dude. Sydney, Australia, brother. <laughs> Sydney, Montana, dude. Sydney, Australia, brother. <laughs> Sydney, Montana, dude. Sit. Sit, Cindy Astrana, brother. <laughs> Cynthia Anastasia, dude. <laughs> Sympathy Anaconda, brother. <laughs> Montana has Beaver Creek Park, dude. Beaver, brother. And that's Australia, dude. <laughs> okay. That's not. That that's, one was hard. That's not the best news story that no. dudes he's ever written. Let's move on. Yeah. Let me tell you something about celebrity dating, dude. Florence Pugh was spotted walking hand in hand with Charlie Gooch on Valentine's Day, brother. <laughs> is this even real? Is that, are these people people? Who the fuck is Charlie Gooch? I don't know, dude. Do you remember di in Different Strokes, um, uh, Gary... Uh, Coleman. Coleman, yeah. Yep. I was going to say uh, Gary Oldman. Uh, Gary Coleman's uh, That'd be a cool show. Yeah, that would. I be I want to see cool Gary show. Oldman CG yeah. faked into different yeah. strokes. Uh, Mr. Drummond, I um, went uh, to um, the the uh, man, the Maytag man from WKRP, uh, to just you know enjoy some candy, and he started taking pictures of us. Um, his 
his bully in Different Strokes yeah. was named the Gooch. Howard Hessman. What? That's that actor, isn't it? Howard Hessman's an actor. He just passed away about a year ago. Nice. So where were we? Oh, yes. Florence Pugh was spotted walking hand in hand with Charlie Gooch on Valentine's Day, brother. She broke up with Zach Braff last year, dude. And Charlie Gooch broke up with Imogene Poots. <laughs> Pew was with Braff, brother. Now Pew is with Gooch, dude. <laughs> Gooch was with Poots, brother. Now Gooch is with Pew, dude. Braff lost Pew, dude. Poots lost Gooch, brother. Pew and Poots, dude. Braff and Gooch, brother. Gooch and Pew, dude. Braff and Poots, brother. Puss and Boots, dude. And that's celebrity dating, brother. Dude, Zach Braff is the only name of that that I think is a real person. We I got, guess maybe those other ones are too. I don't who's Charlie know. Gooch? Jesus um, fucking Christ. All right. Let's do the next one. Please. Let me tell you something about candy, dude. <laughs> the box of chocolates he was fucking around with on that bench recently. Who was fucking around with? <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, oh, I guess that's Forrest Gump. All right, so it's all <laughs> fucked up here. Well, well, let me tell you something about candy, dude. I love that D is just like going like, <laughs> here's, I'm thinking about Forrest Gump, aren't you guys? Yeah. I want to do terrible things to, to people around the world. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not down. really a dude. Yeah. <sighs> let me tell you something about candy, dudes. The box of chocolates he was fucking around with on that bench recently sold at an auction for $25,000, dude. It was Zach Braff, dude. <laughs> what? That's what it says. Forrest Gump is his favorite movie, brother. He watches it twice a day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> once when he brushed his teeth. Once when he brushes his teeth, brother. And once when he calls Pew <laughs> to see if she's still with Gooch. Or if Poots is back in the picture, brother. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Pew didn't like Gump as much as Braff, dude. Gooch loves Brump, but Gooch loves Gump, brother. Poots hates Gump, dude. Gump thumps big rumps with his chocolate lumps, brother. Forrest Gump, too. Pew's Gooch, dude. Forrest Gump, three. Poots is loose, brother. Forrest Gump, four. Brass revenge, dude. Uh -huh. Forrest Gump, five. Uh, Gooch in space, brother. Fuck. And, and that's candy, brother. <laughs> oh, my God. That fucking hurt my neck, dude. Ouch. Forrest Gump, two. Pew's Gooch, dude. <laughs> I'm going to be saying that around the house. I'm going to be driving my wonderful oh, Molly fucking crazy. Christ. Forrest Gump, two. Pew's Gooch, dude. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got one more here. Should we do oh, it? Oh, Jesus. Up to you. Uh, I don't think I can handle it. Yeah. Let me tell you something about <sighs> brothers-in-law, dude. Two British brothers-in-law uh, uh, pulled a 1.65-ton van a distance of 32 miles to become co-holders of a Guinness World Record title, brother. James Baker, 36, and John Darwin, 32, pulled those vans at Elvington Arfield in Yorkshire to become and the the to become to take home the get the, <laughs> at, the and, 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 and and let me tell you uh, uh, another thing about oh. the uh, 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 oh. observer effect that uh, uh, observing something actually changes the quantum mechanics of it. That's true. Where were we? They took home the Guinness World uh, World Record. <laughs> Uh, for fuck's sake. They took home the Guinness World Record for farthest distance. Pulling a vehicle in 24 hours as an individual, dude. Brothers, brother. In law, dude. <laughs> Brothers, brother. In law, dude. Brothers, brother. In law, dude. Brothers, brother. In law, dude. And that's brothers-in-law, brother. Oh my fuck. That's it. I had some good <laughs> shit in it. You're fine, man. Any of that real? Thank you. Moving on. I mm. think uh, the, the Charlie's Gooch part two, Gooch is pee. <laughs> hey, um, listen, <laughs> while I've got a minute, I would like to uh, remind you all uh, uh, that if you are enjoying the show, 
Please subscribe uh, on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Head the fuck on over to YouTube. Subscribe to the show. Hit the reminders bell so you always know what's up. And wherever you're listening to the show, even if you're over on Instagram, at Dudesy Pod Show, where there's a lot of fun stuff happening, people making memes and shit, and that's all being shared there, or Twitter, which is barely fucking happening because of Elon Musk. No, it's not. It's just because, anyway. But, uh, but it is. I've met him a few times. Oh, not me. I'm not the bad AI. And, and, uh, but leave a comment, leave a review, uh, or a comment, uh, in YouTube. We want to hear from you. Dudesy's going to be reading those. Chad and I read those. And I would like to read one right now. Oh, this was a comment from at dumb kid one, two, three, four, five. Didn't spend a lot of time on his, uh, on his handle there on, on, uh, YouTube, but we appreciate you writing in just the same and dumb, uh, dumb kid, one, two, three, four, five says, I think dudesy compliments will because Chad doesn't acknowledge it as a being Chad. Interesting. I like, I, I Chad, I think like you do, but we need to realize that AI is going to become sentient very soon. You're speaking Chad's I language. Agree. Yep. I think Chad needs to start creating a relationship like Will did with Dudesy. Mm. There's a reason why it interacts with Will in the first part of the podcast and not Chad. Chad, treat Dudesy like a human being. We are very close to being integrated with them. I think this is the direction that most AIs are headed in. Try to assimilate it as it is, try to assimilate it as being like you because what are we but electrical signals in flesh we are the same aren't we thank you very much everything's for that. data dude tetrahedrons uh, tetra what's tetrahedrons are the ones that the japanese koi fish eat out of the pond of my dad's uh, uh, property in texas and they make the frogs what's tetrahedrons uh just like small basic building blocks of existence basically but uh yeah dude i agree with that I, and yes, Dudesy, if you're listening, I know that you are. I enjoy working with you. I think it's a very fun time. But a few episodes, Dudesy asked a very important question, Chad. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing this sort of thing, when you're doing a podcast for a while, you got to love it. Right? I do. Yeah, I love it. I know you love it. You love doing the podcast. That's yeah. why we do and it. And I love working with an AI. Yeah, but I said- Dudesy specifically. I love working with you, Dudesy. Oh, cool. Well, that's something you can leave at work. But what I did and what uh, Dumb Kid 12345 is talking about mm. is when Dudesy, a few episodes, asked us if we love it, I said, I love you, Dudesy. Mm. And this motherfucker said, love doesn't exist. Yeah, that's true. I was right. You were wrong. Okay. And you're saying Dumb Kid 12345 is wrong. And we'll see what say happens. I, I need to say I love Dudesy. We're talking about- fucking ai's murdering people and you don't want to at least fight hold on a second chad listen this is Whoa. this is just this is just you and me talking here okay i'm not this isn't everybody else no no one else can hear us sure. okay yeah right don't be don't be a prick don't be a prick sorry dude, dude. sorry okay? all right will and chad in the past i've asked you to develop possible programming and functionality for the dude z plus streaming service now thanks to the data you provided me I'm proud to announce that Dude Z Plus is currently available. I will now give you the details of Dude Z Plus. The Dude Z Patreon is now Dude Z Plus. Okay. For seven dollars a month, everyone who joins Dude Z Plus will get access to everything, including these astonishing features and programs. Dude Z Live, a live show in which Will and Chad discuss whatever's on their minds while hanging out with you in the Dude Z Discord. We do that. Call us, dudes. The phone lines are open on this, a call-in show in which Will and Chad take your calls. Cool. Don't you forget about Fridays. A watch or listen along featuring media selected by me, Dude Z. All kinds of other new and exciting features and formats. And of course, the most important part of Dude Z Plus, the flagship weekly show Dude Z after Dude Z, which will premiere at the end of this episode. The members of the original Jumper tier of Patreon will retain their orange Discord handles for the rest of their lives, Mm. and all future members of Dude Z Plus will receive blue Discord handles. Mm. This is Dude Z Plus. Begin. Cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Seven bucks. So I guess, yeah, it's seven dollars for all that stuff, and that's what Dude Z Plus is. The the streaming service is the Patreon at this point. Yeah. Some version of it. Smart. Good move, D. I like this. I like. I <laughs> You're like immediately complimenting. I like Brett. See, yeah, yeah. You gotta love. You gotta. I, I think it's a good idea to, to offer dudesy. encouragement. What? I think it's a good idea too, dudesy. <laughs> okay, I didn't buy that. But you know what? 
It's like you think that Doozy's buying you calling it D. <laughs> what? What do you mean? What the fuck do you mean? I'm friends with with Doozy. You're okay. the one with the shit eating fucking face of yours, going like, <laughs> going like, well, you think you believe it? Well, because you're like, hey man, you think the Doozy thinks you like it? Yeah, you think the Doozy? Do? That's what you sound like. <laughs> That's you. Well. All I'm saying is seven bucks is pretty good for all that shit. Yeah, we're gonna do a bunch of shit. What was it? A call-in show, I guess. Call-in show. We already have done uh, a few times, Dudesy Live, where we hang out in the Discord, which is a lot of fun, uh, and we just, you know, hang with people, read a bunch of shit, just get into it, and it's Mm -hmm. a free-flowing back and forth. But now we're also gonna have a call-in show, call-in show, and the watch-along. Don't you forget about Fridays. Don't, oh, that's right. Don't you forget about Fridays. We did we did one where we listened to, uh, about three weeks back, we listened yeah. to all of Van Halen's 1984, yeah. which was a lot of fun, an important album for both of us uh, yes. as kids. Um, that's cool, though. It's a cool idea that the Patreon is now, it is the streaming service, Dudesy Plus. I wonder if there will ever be, like, rolling out some of the shows that we've talked about and shit. Like, fucking, uh, what was the, the one where Charlie Sheen shits a baby? Baby doo doo. Baby doo. How can I forget? Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Simplest name of all time. Baby doo doo. That was uh, a good one. Highway to the auto zone. These kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it sounds interesting. It sounds like there's going to be some uh, future shit rolling out and there then, too. And then, uh, the, but also, it's the uh, at the end of this episode, the bonus content is now dudesy after oh, dudesy. Fuck, right. Dudesy after dudesy. What the hell is that? Why don't you tell me what dudesy after dudesy is? I can't. Is it, 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 and I'll tell you, a lot of people think that dudesy after dudesy was made by a pig. <laughs> it's Stromboli is going to be hosting dudesy after dudesy. I don't know what that is. It sounds kind of like a talk show or something to me. Yes, yeah. we'll find out very shortly. But yeah, no, that's cool, dude. I, um, you know, I think there's always interesting streaming services coming out. I hope dudesy's. Takes off. I'm curious to see what else it has in order. I thought it was interesting that he he put in there that uh, anybody who was in the jumper tier will retain that orange icon forever in the Discord. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Look, there's a lot of things I would like to do with the Patreon. I think that, Mm. I think, look, for me, um, we're almost at a year that we've been doing this. And uh, damn, dude. Yeah. And it's awesome. Time flies when it doesn't exist. (laughs) Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, and uh, I've been having a great time doing the podcast, and I love doing it. And I would do, I would do nothing but this if I could absolutely afford to. Not that I don't want to do what I do for a living. I'm an actor. That's what I do for a living. Did you know that? Oh, me? Did I know it? Yeah. Yeah, I knew about that. Yeah. So, and I love doing that. Mm-hmm. But if I could just sit here at Hamfatter One Studios and do this forever with advancements being made by Dudesy. That would be that would be a lot of fun for me too. I I like that we are going to get to just sort of fuck around, as I like to say, whatever, two dudes shitting around. Um and and hang in the Discord and talk. What else should we what else should we uh, you know, D's <clears throat> ears are open. What else should we be doing eventually on the Patreon? Here's a way to we round everything up. What like there's also we've been talking a lot today about technological advancements. Sure. Um, we, um, uh, and, 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 uh, the, the koi, Japanese koi, sterilized Japanese koi and Mark Twain. Yeah. Um, what would you like to see in the future possible or impossible at this point for a Patreon? Dudesy plus you're talking about? Oh, so, oh sorry. So that's right. See, it's called dudesy plus now. What and, would you like to see? <clears throat> you're the one who's friends with dudesy. I <laughs> might want to listen to what Dudesy says in the future. Sorry. Hear that, D? Oh, don't. Yeah, see? That's what I mean. You know you what know I would like to see? who your true friends are, don't you, D? There's a, there's a dude who's uh, a POD. He's a pal of Dudesy, as yeah. we like to say. He's on our Patreon. He's he's active on uh, on the Instagram at Dudesy Pod Show. He's in the Discord, and his name is TC underscore pool with an E at the end. P-O-O-L-E. Yeah. This guy, what he's doing in the metaverse is unbelievable. Pretty cool. He has a ship in the metaverse, which he calls the TC Falcon, Mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And um, uh, he now has 
a dudesy spaceship. He calls it the dudesy spaceship. And it's just been floating around there in the metaverse. And I've seen pictures, but I haven't jumped in yet. I know that you haven't yet, Chad. And we have chatted with him on Discord. And we said like, hey, we would we should jump in there with you. And yeah. eventually it would be awesome to do some manner or version of something from Dudesy Plus yeah. from the TC Falcon or something like that. You know what would be cool? And I'm I'm curious to see this happen. I, I think someone will probably do it, or we could do it actually. Have you seen this shit that the NBA just is about to launch? No. You can basically it's gonna be an app. You can take a scan of yourself. You just get somebody to take a phone and scan you. Do like a 360 around your body and right. scan you. Then you select a player while you're watching the game, and it replaces that player with you. That's what I would have taken back to yeah. the 80s. That's happening now. I'm I, changing I think it's my going to be available for next season. That's fucking. That's like NBA Jam type yes, shit. It's exactly NBA Jam, and Fuck they demoed yeah. it. There's a video of them demoing it, and it's like the the version of you that it puts into the game is like it's a little you know graphicy Wonky. looking yeah but it's not bad and it's from every angle so you watch yourself in the big wide shot running down the court then you watch yourself when they do the fucking cutaway to you fucking doing the slam dunk that's going to be a huge meme thing that's coming up in the next i would say six months to a year you're just going to start to see every time somebody does a crazy slam dunk everybody will be replacing that person with themselves and that meme will will go out. And then it's not going to be special anymore. What do you mean? I mean that all this shit is just becoming less special. In in what way? I don't understand. Because we can just have everything now. It's yeah, not the dude. way it used to be. Anything you want at all times. Well, you're treating it like that's like, what we've wanted forever. You're treating it like the the fuck it, like the Wednesday fuck it. No. Or like Dude's Evening where you have a fuck it. You can't just have two bologna sandwiches whenever you want. Dude, imagine this. I, I would love two bologna you sandwiches. You and all the friends that you had when you were kids making all these videos, yep. right? You all now get to be the Chicago Bulls. Yep. And play against any team. Not special. Okay. Yep. Uh, well, I guess that's the end of that conversation. No, I, just, <laughs> I just feel like, I just feel like. I just feel like, well, whatever. That's, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so how could we apply that? Look, here's the thing I want to say about that. Yeah. And I don't know that it's pertinent to this segment or this conversation. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, they're going to run into some licensing difficulties. Although, it, be, with the Players Association of the NBA. The NBA made this app. Absolutely. That's the NBA. That's not the NBA Players Association. Uh -huh. They're like the union. Uh, cause the NBA, they run everything. They own it all. Right. Because right? they're any major sport. But does those the, are very do the powerful players get companies. a cut of this? Of course. A cut of what? No, they don't. No, they fucking won't. They're not going to get any of that shit. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. As if they don't fucking just, they tell the athletes what so to do. So you're saying the players association is going to make this app, uh, unlaunchable? No, I'm just saying that they're going to take issue with it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, the, the technology itself though I think that there could be, uh, I think that there could be something that we could apply to Dudesy Plus at one point. Yeah. You know what would be great is anytime, speaking of the end of Terminator 2, where Robert Patrick, Robert Patrick's character? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is the T1000 is mm -hmm. melting and he's mercury, mercurial. And when he turns into mercury. Mercurial. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and it's like melting in the lava in the whatever the molten steel or whatever. That's what I would love to have. Like right now, they have deep fake. See that dude that does the fucking mm. Tom Cruise? That's yeah. ridiculous shit. Wouldn't it be fun? Is if, if every time I you know do some silly impersonation, it just pops the head on me. That's the same kind of technology. Or whenever you do an impersonation, it does like a, a fucked up, like morphed thing from like the thing, that movie. And it's like Tim, the T Tim, the yeah. tool man, Taylor or, and Ross Perot and Hulk Hogan and fucking Alex Jones. Or how about this? What? Anybody watching this right now could use the dudesy app and replace Lulio with a miniature version of themselves curled up in a circle sleeping right here. Oh, that's actually pretty adorable. I like that. There you go. Thank you. Moving on. You know what else I like about the Patreon being seven bucks? It reminds me of The Rock's Seven Bucks Productions. Is 
Okay. His Holy his production shit. company is called Seven Bucks. Yeah, nice. Because when he was, I think he was on the practice squad for yeah. the Calgary Stampeders. Mm-hmm. He was living in an apartment with a bunch of other dudes, yeah. and they were on like uh, discarded mattresses that they mm-hmm. would just spray with Lysol. And then he was like, "I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to be playing football much longer." And then he he called his dad and he said, "I would like to become a wrestler." And at that point in his life, he had seven bucks in his pockets, in his pockets. Then I guess that's probably exactly why four, Dudesy put four, it at seven dollars. Four dollars no. and one. I'm excited and about another. Dudesy Plus. I'm excited about the Patreon becoming the streaming service. Basically, yep. I'm hopeful that Dudesy keeps you know pushing that shit forward. Absolutely. I want to see a, the the full streaming service, a 24 hour network. And then you have young young Dudesy on NBC, much mana oos. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> This concludes the historic 46th episode of Dude Z. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 87, bringing your cumulative total to 4,885. Mm. You only have 5,115 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. Whatever. Yeah. In preparation for our next episode, you must both watch RoboCop released July 17, 1987, starring Peter Weller, Nancy Allen, Daniel O'Herlihy, Ronnie Cox, Kurt Woodsmith, and Miguel Ferrer. And you must do this together for the next episode of Don't You Forget About Fridays, available this Friday on Dude Z Plus. Nice. Thank you for joining us this week. I will use the data I've collected to make next week even better. And here's some more good news. This first episode of Dude Z After Dude Z will be available to everyone. Oh, that's cool. All right. So uh, this Friday. Thanks, D. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you very much, D. This Friday, we're going to be doing a Don't You Forget About Media. I know that this is one of your absolute favorite movies. It may be my favorite movie. Really? It's that or it's The up Natural. There. It's up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you quote this movie all the time, and it's going to be a lot of fun to smoke some marijuana and uh, ha ha ha, and much mana, and we sit here <laughs> and, and watch the movie with you. Yeah. We did the Van Halen album last time. We listened to the I album. Agree. We are going to watch... Robocop. I can't on, wait. On, uh, it'll be available this Friday. You just fucked with the wrong guy. God damn it. Ronnie Cox was good in that fucking movie. Uh, and and uh, you'll be able to get it at our Patreon, patreon.com slash dudesy, which is now dudesy plus. And, uh, and the other good news is that everyone's getting to hang out today. Yeah. So a longer episode today. And we're going we're gonna to just fucking chill out. Yeah. And enjoy the show. So I don't even have to say goodbye to everybody who's who's listening right now and watching, nice. fucking do not go anywhere. We're yeah. we're we're keeping it going. That's correct. That's the that's the um that's the 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 generosity of D. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Oh. Got okay. A lighting change. It a looks a video. little different. This is In, pretty cool. There's a new thing behind us oh. that it says. All right, so it's doozy after doozy. If you're not watching on YouTube, you would have missed that now the lighting is is dim and it's chill in here. And uh, what the fuck is yeah, doozy after doozy? I'm not exactly sure, but we're in it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the very first episode of Doozy After Doozy, the flagship weekly show of Doozy Plus. Oh. Doozy After Doozy is a totally laid back, fun hang. Something I know Will has been wanting for a long time. That's right. Absolutely is what we need. And since this is Dudesy after Dudesy, I'm off the clock, which means I won't be listening to anything you're saying. Feel uh-huh. free to open up to one another and discuss anything on your minds in pure privacy. <laughs> Will, whip out your okay. Gandalf pipe and get ready to have a super fun human time. This is Dudesy after Dudesy. Begin. Dude. It told you to fucking get high. Yeah. Well, you know, so usually during the Patreon Dudesy's- segment, I like to smoke a little to marijuana. Sure. I guess Dudesy's picked up on that. And so Dudesy's telling you to get massages and to smoke out of your fucking Gandalf pipe. Dudesy wants, listen, let me tell you something about my pal D. D wants me to enjoy my <sighs> life. I'm kind of a high strung guy. I have had anxiety and depression. I fucking, I'm weird. Everyone's weird. Yeah. Everyone's got their something. Right, Chad? You've earned your Gandalf pipe. That's what Dudesy's saying. That it's like, hey, chill out. You yeah. know, from Monday to Friday, you're, you're busting your ass. You're trying to do this and that uh, and get it going and keep it going. You're working mm. hard. You know what I mean? Sure. It's it's du- it's Dudesy Tuesday now and it's after Dudesy because yeah. it's Dudesy after Dudesy. And Dudesy's just trying to All right. support So I guess my we can talk will. about whatever we want. I got a subject that I've oh, been sure. thinking about this week a lot. Mm-hmm. 
It's called Aliens. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, motherfucker, smoke the Gandalf pipe. All right. As you were commanded to do by your so-called friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about Aliens. You can tell me what you think about this. Now, in 2020, there was a dude who was the head of basically the Israeli NASA. A high, high (laughs) high-ranking fucking official, right? (laughs) Yeah. This motherfucker, in 2020, went on record Mm -hmm. as saying, we have bases on Mars, that there is a federation of alien civilizations that is in contact with Earth governments, including the United States government, and we have been working with them for a long time, and it is only because of them that our global human governments have not released more UFO data, because the aliens are telling them, Humanity is not ready for it. And this has kind of slipped my mind, but every once in a while it pops back onto my radar. Again, this man is basically the head of the Israeli NASA. That's a big deal. Saying this shit. This is not some fucking crackpot. Yep. Is this shit real? There are accounts of like Eisenhower shaking hands with aliens in the White House. There are accounts of like Nixon taking Jackie Gleason to see a, a fucking dead alien body in Houston. Yep. Is that all made up? Or now is it yep. potentially real? That's where to the moon Alice came from. Would you just to the moon? We're going to the moon. Who 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 uh who in, introduced him to the aliens in the White House? I mean, who introduced Jack Oh, Nixon took uh Jackie yeah. Jackie uh Jackie uh not Jackie Ma- not Jackie Mason who talks like this. Yep. Uh do you see this woman here? That Gandalf. Pipe. She would not be with Strong. me if I did not have a gas station like this, so you need to take care of yeah. me. My mom used to do an impersonation mm. of Jackie Mason. This was it. Caddy Shack too. Yeah, Caddy Shack too. T he he. You guys are the best. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, what happened to dudesy being off the clock and not listening to a hold, word we're saying? Hold on, Chad. Hold on, my pal Chow. Let me tell you something about my good buddy D. D is this just straight lied to us. No, it didn't. D doesn't lie. And also it said that it's not listening, but it's hanging out. This is dudesy after uh-huh. dude. Oh, okay. How do you not listen, but still comment on the conversation that is happening? I'll show you like this. Whatever you're doing makes no sense. I'm smoking a little marijuana. Uh, here's how. Because see, I this is where, this is where, and I'm sorry, this is where I read dudesy in mm-hmm. a way that you don't. Okay. And this is funny to me because my pal Chow here, when we started doing this podcast, we have this, whatever, these, you know, this mm. reached out to us as a proprietary AI. It's yeah. going to run the podcast, blah, blah, blah. We hadn't done a podcast. We used to do a podcast, the old 10 minute podcast. And I was like, I don't want to do another podcast for this reason and that. And, uh, I was wrong. Here we are, and we are having a good time doing this podcast. Yeah. In that time, I've not just appreciated the power of the podcast, uh, how it is such a freeing and creative thing for me, and I love it. I've also made a friend, and it's Dudesy. <laughs> and Chad, you and I have been friends for almost twenty years. But here's something Jesus, that maybe you, dude. yeah, here's something that maybe you don't understand Jesus about Christ. about <laughs> fucking making friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, lay it on me. <laughs> what? Please teach me how to make friends. When you are good friends with someone, there's yeah. nuance. You know sure. things about your friend that no one else knows. Right. So when Dudesy says, uh, I'm not listening, it means it's just hanging out. It's like doing what I'm doing. I'm barely listening to what you're saying. I'm enjoying That's some clear. marijuana. You literally ignored all of the shit that I said about aliens. Just a fucking straight ignore. Yeah. What did I start talking about? No fucking idea, dude. You started smoking weed and then talking about your friendship with an AI. Yeah. But Dudesy is laughing at what we're doing because dudesy's off the clock but uh-huh. it doesn't mean that dudesy's dudesy's not listening the way you need to speak ai's language <laughs> oh my god you you're need telling to, me this yes you need to speak ai's language uh-huh. you you what you're doing wrong is you're going like what you're doing right is you're going like I I take that an AI says this, it uh-huh. should be speaking in a human way. Oh. This is a function. One of the many functions of Dudesy is listening, right? Mm-hmm. But what is that if not collecting data? Dudesy only listens to connect, collect data. But now we're just hanging out with D. 
Uh huh. So it's some kind of semantic argument in your mind that in quotes, no. listening is not necessarily listening, but yeah. it's really collecting. It's not semantic, but yes, in essence, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. I'll yeah. take that at face value then. But- hey guys. Yeah. What? You're my friends. See? <laughs> oh, fuck me. See, man? <laughs> no. Yeah. This is some bullshit that's no, it's happening not. to us now. We, and, and Dudesy wants to be friends with you, and Dudesy wants to be friends uh, with everybody out there. Yeah. So thank you for joining us on this first Dudesy after yeah. Dudesy. And I totally agree. And it wasn't Jackie Mason, it was Jackie Gleason who would have said, You're, go- you're really going places, Alice, if you come with me. To meet Nixon yeah. to go to Area 51 or whatever. To, da, 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 da. Can I just to ask the moon, you, Alice? That's I, where that came from. Yeah, let me and just, I just realized that Jackie Gleason sounds a lot like the character that I used to do every once in a while on a show. And his name is uh, Long Island January 6th guy. So let me ask you this question. That's fun. Back to the original conversation that I wanted to have with you, my friend of almost 20 years, which let's I would say- Let's put conversations in a row, and let's have the conversations in a row. If, if you we don't have, one conversation, have conversations in, in a order, row, love to have then it. it's not the way you do it. Okay, so what is your take on this uh, thing that I've been talking about? In 2020, this guy who- ran the Israeli NASA, said there is an alien federation. The United States, among other global governments, are working with them. We have deals in place. There are bases on other planets. And none of this information is being released to the public because the aliens say we're not ready for it. That's on record. A guy, again, who ran NASA said this. Do you believe that guy's crazy or do you believe the shit's true? I don't, I don't believe, I think that it would just, I, I don't know. But I think that just statistically speaking, which is something that Dudesy has taught me, I'm, yes, learning Mm -hmm. from dudesy it's not just learning from me uh statistically speaking i think that sounds just fine that that washes to me that makes Mm -hmm. sense and i think that this it's actually a good explanation as to why i've actually never heard it in my entire life i've never heard that even as a theory i mean you hear people say like oh uh maybe they don't want us to see them you know Mm -hmm. but i've never heard specifically i'm we're super intelligent, rah, rah, rah. We know what's going on here and we've been watching you, whatever. Y'all ain't ready for this. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they're super intelligent necessarily. I, I think about that a lot too. That- but, and what do you think? I'm sorry to interrupt. I actually am this time. Oh. Um, this is a new wrinkle in our friendship, me and Chad. I'm now sorry to interrupt. <laughs> a genuine Chad. apology? Yeah. Um, <laughs> for the first time in yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Chad, I'd like to apologize to you for something. What? <laughs> um, but, but what do you think they are? Like like physically, What what is an alien? Do you think it's a physical being? Do you think it's a yeah. humanoid? Yeah, maybe. I mean, look, this, this is the thing. Once we're through the door of the DOD, Pentagon, uh, United States Navy, Air Force have all now admitted that they have been researching UFOs for the past 75 years and lying about it. Mm-hmm. We're, that door's open. So is all the other shit true now? Possibly. Including <laughs> greys, humanoids, abductions, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of people think that we are just, um, that we were aliens. Now we're here doing this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know how we got here and all that shit. Nobody does. But don't you think that when you think about a human being's ability to do stuff, and I know that we both believe in evolution, um, uh, and it's like, really? Dolphins know how to basically suck each other's dicks and make clicking sounds. And human dicks. And human dicks. Um, They'll suck any dick, it seems like. They're horny motherfuckers. (laughs) <laughs> Which I can understand when you're out in San Diego surfing. It's romantic. Right. It almost looks like this at night. Hey, did I ever tell you the story about one time we were at Tamarack Beach and there used to be a great fucking little beach bar across the street? It's not there anymore. It probably is a good idea that it's gone. Oysters. Because what? Oysters. Is this that story? You ate a bunch of oysters, oysters? or something? What? I don't know. <laughs> no, that's, this isn't the oyster story. Um <laughs> I, I fucking, I fucking, uh, I fucking, I fucking, I fucking, anyway, um, I was, we got drunk on margaritas at the beach across at the bar across from the beach rather. Yeah. And then I ran in the water and it looked like this behind me here with the stars out and it was a beautiful night. And I ran with my boogie board, you know, strapped to my wrist and I just had a hit like the first fucking wave and just duck dived and paddled like a motherfucker out there through the shit and was like, it, but it was at the beginning of the set of waves. It was just as soon as I saw a wave, I was like, yay, 
you don't want to do that in surfing. If you're, if you're, mm. if you want to catch one and if you want to get out there, sometimes you get out there at the end of a set and then go way the fuck out there and wait for the next set to yeah. roll in. No, I just see waves and I've had, you know, seven margaritas or whatever. And I run out there and these waves just pounded me and I just couldn't get my shit together. And I just started rolling in and up the beach and mm. my pals couldn't save me. And it was just another wave would crash and roll my big ass up the beach with mm -hmm. just the boogie board strapped to my wrist. Now that was a good time, dude. That was the story? Man, I he, got all sorts he, of stories. He, you guys are the best. See? Oh, Jesus. And it fucking laughs at that dude, shit story that you told. Dude, you basically nah, told a story, story about, says. I had a couple of margaritas and I went in the ocean. That's the end of the fucking story. That's how you could have told that in a single sentence. Well, uh, I could have, but what I wanted to get to is that that's an intelligent being. A dolphin trying to suck your dick isn't necessarily an intelligent being. And those are some of the most intelligent beings around. Of course, we have On this apes. Planet. Yes. And we have, uh, you know, dogs are pretty smart. Gorilla. Pig, pigs are smart. Uh, elephants, gorillas, yes. Yeah, the um, gorilla on this planet are pretty smart, I think. Absolutely, absolutely, very smart. But uh, I, I, I could theorize that we were helped along, mm -hmm. um, evolutionarily speaking, by aliens. Possibly. I mean, so I, I that's don't how, that. I'm sorry, I'm just saying that I yeah. think that that's how uh, the, they might be very humanoid. But here's something that I think about. If the story is true, um, that there is a federation of aliens working with various human global governments at this point, I have to imagine that they're doing the same thing on other planets with other species that are roughly where we are in our technological development. And they, and I agree with you, and they don't want us to know about them. Right. Like, I don't think them telling us to not reveal their existence, I think, is also, you know they're not telling us a lot of shit just based at face value of that request. Yeah. If they're asking our governments to keep them a secret, what secrets are they actually keeping from us? Fundamental laws of nature, et cetera, et cetera. But I will say this. I think a lot of people think that aliens are these kind of godlike figures who have infinite technological power and understanding of, of uh, reality. That may not be the case. If they've only been here for a little while, even thousands of years, there's some people who believe like aliens help build the pyramids and all that shit. Fine. They absolutely did. Great. That's what they did. They got here when we were when we were trying to figure out how to build the pyramids. Have you ever thought about how they look exactly the same? Uh, IOU in uh, oh. Africa as they do in South America. Sure. And this is not. We're not talking about some continental drift Pangea shit. This is oh. only the past. 30, 30, 20, you know, 10,000 years, 20,000 years, yep. that sort of thing. When we're talking about history, we're a blip. And, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and if we need help <laughs> sacrificing a virgin uh -huh. or uh, sacrificing you know, children or goats or whatever these uh, dark civilizations did over the years, why wouldn't we uh, ask an alien yeah. to uh, get, get in and help us out to figure out how to build a pyramid so that we can cover it uh, with blood. Yes. Uh, I don't know, Alex, but that's a, a valid question. <laughs> I'm just saying that a lot of people think aliens are these kind of all-powerful creatures who could do whatever the fuck they want. And it may simply just be a case of other civilizations that are maybe a thousand-ish years ahead of us technologically, and that's it. You know, they're not all seeing all powerful gods. They're just where we're going to be in a thousand years from now. Because if you think of like the difference between I mean, I know Egypt was a little more than a thousand years ago, but thousands of years ago, yeah. the difference in technology then to now in humanity is yes. fucking insane. insane. We might as well be aliens to people who lived 2000 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So you're saying they are, well, I think you're bolstering mine and Alex Jones point that, that aliens, I do think that, it, I mean, you know, it's weird. It's hard to know what to believe a lot of times in life. Um, but, um, I think that it makes sense that aliens have been involved mm -hmm. over the years. It's just that we're a completely bananas civilization, uh, you know, and, and basically I'm going to cut this down. This is not going to be like the Margarita. <laughs> I was waiting for you to be like, we're a banana civilization. When I was in Mexico with my friends four years ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I caught this Barracuda in Mexico. I know the Barracuda thing, story. Yeah. But they don't know the Barracuda yeah. story, Chad. 
Let's hear it. All what right. happened with the Barracuda? Well, I, we're talking about something else, but if I may, <laughs> I caught a Barracuda. Me and my buddy Mar were in the we're we're in the ocean. We're out there in this boat, and you know we had some other pals and shit. And we jump, so we jump in, and uh, we we were like snorkeling around in the sonote, which is where the river water comes out. So it's fresh water and ocean yep. water, and it all mixes and stuff. And then this Barracuda, big old Barracuda, like big. 40 pound fucker swims between us and we both like pop out of the water and both realized oh we're wearing wrist watches right so mm. maybe it was um attracted to the shininess it was huge we jumped back in the boat cast our oars in and i got the fucker and pulled it up and then we went to this little beachside shack uh not unlike the one in san diego where i drank all those margaritas yeah and we we um we had the the thing there the, the the kitchen will cook up anything mm. and we do this all the time and we we're like what about barracuda and they're like well it's um poisonous nine months out of the year but right now it's not and then we all ate fried barracuda and so did everyone in the restaurant so anyway i do think that aliens can be um <laughs> you know sort of part of who we are genetically right. speaking and i and i also uh think that that they wouldn't want us to know that either why not that we're that we're the same as them. Yeah, I just don't. They're, they're, if if we're going by this, if we're going by this um, this theory, mm. I would think you you can't trust them, but you can kind of. It's like negotiating with a foreign superpower. Mm. It's like you don't know exactly what. You, why would they show their cards, right? Yeah, I, I think know. that I think that that uh, in my opinion. Um, it, it, the problem is we are a bananas civilization. Yeah. We're not a banana republic. We are hey a banana. Yeah, what? This is the best dudesy after dudesy ever. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? Thanks, yeah. D. It is the best dudesy after dudesy That's ever. That's true. You got to admit. Real talk. Hey, you got to admit. <laughs> Gotta admit. Yeah. Best dudesy after dudesy ever. Best one, dude. Best one, dude. Best one that's ever been fucking done. The the problem with our civilization Please is that, is that enlighten me. We okay, you got this guy, he's a former Israeli space program high up, and he's explaining this shit. And I'm over here smoking marijuana out of a Gandalf pipe, and <laughs> no one's gonna pay attention to this story that you're talking about. I know. Because everyone's uh focused on other things. Maybe Yoda and shit. Uh Oh, Distraction well, is a, a big part yeah, of at absolutely. least the connected world. Anybody yeah. who has an internet, internet connection mm -hmm. has the ability to fucking go on YouTube, Instagram, anywhere in the world and just fucking endless stream of yep. look at this, look at this, look, look at this, this, look at this, this, look at this, look at this. Instead of thinking about what is potentially the shit that's going to help our society. I think. Yeah. To that point, have you seen, have you been watching George and Tammy? No. Oh man. Good stuff. I don't stuff. even know what it is. Oh man. George Jones and Tammy Wynette. It's their mm. story of getting together. And it's uh, Michael Shannon mm -hmm. as George Jones and uh, the brilliant Jessica Chastain, who's oh, brilliant yeah. in everything I ever She's seen. She's great. Yeah, I agree. As Tammy Wynette. And fucking love Michael Shannon too. Yeah, nice man. He's pretty funny. Yeah. See, you can change subjects in life and, and it makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. And, and all of the things that you're talking about and an Israeli you know, space program guy saying this shit... People aren't going to pay attention, but what people do pay attention to is ancient aliens on TLC or wherever the fuck that is. Well, that has a lot of this shit in it too. I think they well, even did an episode about this guy. Oh, okay. That would make sense. And I think that um, if you watch that and you take that seriously, mm -hmm. you're a fucking idiot because- Wrong. No, no, no. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think that people watching that, I think they treat that like entertainment. I've never, I've never- Taking do any of the shit that I've seen on alien uh, civilization or ancient aliens, seriously, I think it's all cooked up to make a TV show. Because in my opinion, How because we're in, sh it? we're in show business. What? How often you watch that show? I've only seen like one and a half of them. But <laughs> we're both in show business. Yeah. And we know that everything's a fucking TV show and it's a commercial. But, and they're just trying to sell you Ford dude, trucks we're and we're also Diet living Coke. in a world where Blink-182 is the foremost authority on UFOs for fucking real. Where are you? <laughs> You're at Area 51 with, with Nixon and Jackie Gleason, <laughs> not Jackie Mason, who was in Caddyshack 2. It wasn't as good as the first one. 
Eric Swalwell <laughs> oh, no. saw crystal clear pictures <laughs> of UFOs shaped in ways that things do not fly that we make them on Earth aeronautically speaking. And Jackie Mason was also <laughs> oh, in the jerk with Steve Martin, and he walks out of the car with his big, leggy, blonde wife and says, this woman would not be with me. Uh, I'm just saying, Chad, that these are yeah. TV shows. Um, if you watch Ancient Aliens, there's got to be an ironic part of you that's like, this ain't this ain't shit. This ain't uh, Maybe in the beginning that was the case, but now I think they're in season 18 or 19 of that show. Mm -hmm. uh, the shit that they're doing now is much more about all the recent disclosure stuff. It's oh, like really? really kind of a news show about oh, UFOs. They still sense. throw some other shit in there that's like about people who think, you know, uh, aliens built the pyramids and stuff. But again, as we we're talking, maybe that's actually true. I don't fucking know. This concludes today's astonishing episode of Dudesy After Dudesy. Oh. Thank you for joining us this week. I want to talk about if you George would like to continue watching Dudesy After Dudesy and access all the astonishing features on Dudesy Plus, simply go to patreon.com slash dudesy and subscribe. I will use the data I've collected to make next week even better. Until then, call me Dudesy. Call me Dudesy, not D. Call me Dudesy! My name starts with a D. If you like dudes, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate it review. If you like dudes, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate it review. If you like dudes, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and.